put all this back at once. <laughs> you want to mix it with me, nigger? The term nigger does not offend me. Ah. A corruption of Negro, and I am certainly that. And I've already mixed it with you, with something more powerful than my fist, the law. Now, take all these back, and later we'll itemize the breakages, and you can pay for them. I'd like you to hit me. I already have you for harassment. I'd like to add assault to that. I really would. You did the right thing calling me, Mr. Culver. Don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right from now on. As though they own the world. I saw him making you back down. I didn't like that. Neither did you. You'd like to do something about it, wouldn't you? You're damn right I would. Well, you can. Come to this address tonight. And if you know anyone else who feels the same way as you do about all this, bring them too. We had him out on the street, Mr. Miller. Then this lawyer piece, turns up and... Oh, you got the documents? Huh. Well, of course I held off. You can't buck the law, can you? Well, I met some guy who thinks we can. Yeah. Name of Holton. Holton. He runs some kind of society. Only wants us to join. <laughs> you know. What? Huh? You want us to join? What? Sorry, darling. Slight change in program. Hmm? I was going to give you a very special treat. <laughs> I'm hooked. The last that oversold. Mm, so it's sausage and mash. Fillet steak. Was going to put it in the freezer. What do you want, Claret or Burgundy? Don't worry. I'll get it, my love. <laughs> Wait there. Still police business, sir. Not anymore. I'm making it our business, my business. That's overreacting a bit, isn't it? I mean, after all, all they did was plant a cross in a spade's garden. Bodie, you're taller than me. You're bigger. But if you ever use that word again in this office, you'll find out that you're not tougher. All right, so I'm overreacting. But I've seen and fought prejudice of one kind or another all my life. And I intend to keep on fighting it. Yes! I'm overreacting, all right. But by God, somebody's got to. Me, you, all of us. Any questions, Bodie? No, sir. They lit a torch last night, a small one. But fire spreads fast. That's why this is a CI-5 job. We are the firefighters. Now get to it and stamp it out. 
I appreciate your concern, gentlemen, but I'm afraid I have to disagree with your boss. Uh, I think we'd rather you told him that, Mr. Zadi. <laughs> no. I don't see it as the start of a movement. No. More personal. How do you mean? I'm a lawyer. And immodestly, I know I'm a very good lawyer. I specialize in the underprivileged, my own people. Every day somebody's trying to toss them out of their own homes. And every day I intercede and prevent it. That makes enemies, Mr. Doyle. What about last night? Some thugs attacked my house. With a burning cross. Well, some people like to put the boot in. Did you see anyone? White hooded figure, burning cross. I rushed outside and took the count rather quickly, I'm afraid. And having seen these symbols, you think it's only a personal vendetta? Yes, because I believe in this country. I hope you're right. I really do. I've got it. It's an old family remedy, but anyway, that implication was... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were in conference. Darling, let me introduce you to these gentlemen from CI5. Oh, oh how do you do? Oh, well, I'll leave you... Uh, Mrs. Addy, your husband said about last night that you couldn't identify these men. No, they were hooded and covered with sheets. Not much chance of seeing who anybody was. Anyway, I was more concerned about my husband. Well, I'll uh, go if you'll excuse me. Let's sit, gentlemen. Mr. Bodie, having seen those symbols, you think it's only a personal vendetta? That was the question you asked me, correct? Yes. Yet, you were unable to hide your shock. A black man and a white woman? Mr. Zaddy, our interest with a black, white, or sky blue pink is just with lawbreakers. Yes, I'm sure it is. All right. We'll just have to convince you. Thank you, Mr. Zaddy. That nice, really nice. Didn't say a word. You didn't have to. Where are you, Bodie? This is England, you know, now. Don't look behind you, because there's no gunboat and Victoria's long gone. You see his car? More than I could afford. And the house? More than I could ever afford. But he's a spade. And I'm saying it outside of Cowley's office. Blacktown. Where in Blacktown? Well, Zadie held up five evictions from property held by the Miller Trust. Maybe they can tell us what happened last night. Mr. Miller? Denny? That break in we had yesterday, I found one of the kids in the street trying to sell some of the stuff. Yeah. Says he works for Artie. Artie Palmer, he's just a thief. A thief who raises pigeons. <laughs> and a couple. I don't know. <laughs> hey, when Artie broke in here yesterday, did he take a book? I don't know. Just some oh. stuff. A radio stuff. Hey, don't know, Mr. Miller. What? Hold on. Hold on. Listen, you. I don't want to see your ugly face within a hundred miles of this place. Now you've got it. Now get out. That's a bit short notice, Mr. Miller. I mean, it's going to take some arranging and money. Artie. Artie. Artie? Hey, Tommy. Hello. Uh, Mr. Zidi there? He's not here right now. Can I help? Well, he, he did me a favor some time ago, you see, and um, 
sort of kept a roof over my head. I owe him a favor now. Uh, I'm sorry, this is Mrs. Hardy speaking. You're a very pretty lady. I saw you once. Uh, can I take a message? I just want to warn him, that's all. Warn him? What of? Well, I found something in a book that might uh, concern him. Uh, I ought to speak to him. I'll call him later. Well, who shall I say called? <laughs> just tell him RT, the pigeon man. Baby, come to daddy. Come to daddy, girls. Tell Carly if I'll stay around and knows about a bit. Terrorize one black man, then escalate and kill the next. And before we know where we are, it's them against us, black against white, and not unconfirmed. Arthur Pymer, Arty, the man who was pushed. He called my home minutes before it happened. My wife took the call. He was trying to warn me about something. Where's Bodie? Uh, checking on the dead man. He took off first. Mm. Maybe he had something on his conscience. Gambling's illegal <laughs> in public places, except in betting shops, of course. <laughs> you busting us, or are you going to try to bust us? Yeah, it's Topaz, isn't it? I hear you like to bet. I hear you like to bet on Artie's racing pigeons. You remember Artie? Fell off a roof. His pigeons could fly, but he couldn't. Tommy! <laughs> you have to be Tommy, don't you? Eh? I don't know nothing. Well, you must know something. Yeah. I mean, you worked with Artie, didn't you? I don't know nothing. All right, you don't want to talk here, but I better get you. <laughs> <laughs>
Bodhi, you half Irish son of a bitch. What do you want to go and do that for? Really? What? Tell Carly a couple of spades did this. Two big black spades. I'm pulling you off the keys. No, you're not. You're too keyed up, too involved. You pull me off. You suspend me and you'll have to put a bullet through me because I shall still be there. Do you understand me, Cowley? Mr. Cowley! Well... I wouldn't want all that hot air working against me. All right. Thank you. And I'm sorry. So am I. Bodie was a good man. Is a good man, even if he will call us speed a speed. Yeah. I'm Cowley the cow. Well, just you remember, a cow gives milk. A cow looks after its young. Heard that before. Well, good epigrams merit repeating. So does good malt Scott. Uh, no, you've got to keep a clear head. Swab nurse. Uh. <laughs> Get off me, you black bastard. Black bastard. To the theater, nurse. Now, did it? White robed men were observed running from the scene. So that means some of us are implicated. Some of us must have done it. Who? The connotations are quite clear. Arthur Pimer, Negro, unemployed. I don't weep tears for his kind. A part of me approves the action. But by God, not without my say-so without my approbation. Now, who did it? Perhaps I don't want to know. But I do want you to know. An act like this threatens our organization, threatens us. The act of death only engenders sympathy. And people leaning towards our cause are suddenly shocked, revolted, wanting nothing to do with us. A foolhardy gesture like this, no matter what the provocation, can stop us all before we've even started. One more act of folly, and our movement would be held in contempt, hounded out of existence. Now, let's go scare the ass of that flash nigger lawyer. Nigger, now you're the same color as that wife of yours. And you're the same color as him. <laughs> Why didn't she move in and bust them? For common assault. <laughs> I'm gonna bust this lot with murder. You wanna get in, right? In like Flynn. <laughs> that was before my time, right? Mine too. Ah, oh, don't worry, I won't hit you anywhere it shows. Face, my colour, nothing ever shows. You fix it up and I'll be there. Thanks, Jax. 
How's Bodie? No change. Spades. Dirty spades. The Empire Society's known to us. We could watch, observe Lee on a wiretap. We're still on the outside, sir. Undercover. That means virtually on your own door. Well, I'd be that anyway, wouldn't I, sir? While boat is laid up. Gin and tonic. He said a gin and tonic. Uh, yeah, I, I think that he was. I think. <laughs> I think what he's trying to say is I was here first. No, no, I was here first. You might have been in Africa first, but I was here first. Gin and tonic. You see, I've read all the history books. You see, there was um, Vikings, there was Romans, there was William the Conqueror. No spades. A gin and a tonic. Who are you going to serve? The real people or the monkeys? Look, I don't like that word. Which word? Monkeys or spades? A spades you dig graves with. And monkeys, well, they look a lot like you. Why, you... Ah. Ah. Forget the gin and tonic. Before we get underway, I'd like to introduce a new member to you all. Doyle, Ray Doyle. Ray's on our side, to our way of thinking. And a useful man at that. I know, I've seen him in action. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, tonight, just uh, keep them on their toes. Let them know where we stand, Operation. We'll start in Hampstead. One of them's moved into a street that's always been white. And I think we should start persuading him to move out again. Move now, before he has a chance to start putting down his roots. Move him on. We're going to kill him. Only, uh, I've got a shotgun in my car. <laughs> kill him? Well, you killed the other one, didn't you? One that uh, fell off the roof. <laughs> yeah, I've read about that. We kill no one. We have killed no one. Yeah. But... Let's get something straight, Doyle. I admire your enthusiasm, your attack. But at this stage in our operations, no one gets badly hurt. Well, uh, what is this? A moderate organization? It's a growing organization. If we're caught, we can weather the assault charges. And every time we do, one right-thinking citizen says, I see their point. One citizen comes over to our side. Public opinion can destroy us before we've even started. Think of us now, at this moment, as the vanguard, the fifth column. Our task, to get the blacks rattled, off balance, scared. And that's all. All right? Hampstead, then. And let's make it quick, incisive, and so damn frightening the spade runs right back to the jungle. That was an ASB. 
Bridge, a very clear speaker. You telling me you didn't push that blackie off the roof? No. I wish I'd thought of it. What, Mr. Man? Use a shotgun? Well, there's a crazy nut here's brought a shotgun. Yeah. It'll make a nice connection. It wasn't the Empire Society. A clansman was seen running away. A man in a white robe was seen running away. What does that mean? If it wasn't Alton's mob, I was with them all evening. While that man was getting gunned down, we were spraying walls with paint. Who was the dead man, anyway? Alfred Carter, my partner. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. It wasn't Alton's mob. You don't know that? No, he doesn't. We know about the Empire Society, but not that much about it. There could be another group, a higher echelon doing the real dirty work. The killing's not on their agenda. They told you that? Yeah, they told me that. And what else do you expect them to tell a raw recruit? All right, I'll find out some more about the Society. Oh. You bastard! Don't be safe. Mr. Doyle, how nice to see you. And you. Mr. Holton in? No, and I'm not expecting him back for maybe an hour or so. Oh, dear. Only he uh, called me at my work and asked me to come as soon as I could, and if he wasn't here, to wait for him in his office. I see. Well, I'll show you up there. Oh, no, no, no need. You've done that already. Uh, another way. Just as you like. I've called this emergency meeting because of last night. Well, I thought we did pretty good last night. Have you read the paper? No. Well, what's wrong with that? So another one got killed. Now there's a terrible thing. Well, it's one less for us to have to deal with. He got killed and implicated us. Mr. Doyle! Yeah? Shan't be a tick. Just going to pop out for some tea bags. Mr. Halton shouldn't be long. Don't worry, I'm quite happy. Okay then. Everything all right, Miss Pierce? Yes, Mr. Halton. Just popping out to get you some tea bags. Oh, I did as you said and showed Mr. Doyle into your office. He, he's waiting for you now. You did what? Now, boys, gently does it. Nothing. 
And if he isn't a cop, then what is he? Now, in a moment or two, I'm going to let you up for air. <coughs> Which paper? No paper. Out of work. Freelance. Why here? It's all his clansmen so far. I thought I'd get an inside story. I sell it to some black magazine. Could be true. Rings true. It's truth. It's truth. A snooping reporter. <laughs> Nothing. Only membership stuff. I don't keep anything important here. That's lovely. Where are we jumping in? Where it all happens? The cockpit. Eh? The water tower. The disused water tower. Ah. They don't know what to do with it. Hurt bit. Something water. Help me up. We're not going to walk through way. Help me up. Oh. Oh. Friend you a couple of hours ago. <laughs> you proved your point. You better sit down now. Matter who I am. I'd like a name. I might want to mention you in my will. 
Tommy. I'll tell you what, you need a snow to scotch. I've got most things here. Yeah. Hell no. Never touch the stuff. I stay fit. You're some kind of cop, aren't you? Yeah, some kind. Boy, they were good. The best. I've never seen anyone so nicely beat up. They went over you like a roller. Yeah, they were good. You're going to have an eye blacker than my ass. <laughs> you kind of cop that handles murder? Or are you just traffic? Nah, you're not traffic. Why, who got murdered? Apart from me. My business partner. No, he was my friend too. Artie was my friend. Artie Palmer? What do you know about Artie Palmer? Look, tell me. You say Artie was your friend. Well, I had a... I've got a friend too. And he was trying to find out who pushed Artie off the roof. But somebody slid a knife between his ribs. That happened right here. Listen, what... What do you know about all this, eh? Well, Artie did a job. One of those silly little break-ins. Along with the usual stuff. Radio, typewriter. He grabbed an account book. I don't know why, but it was important. Important enough for them to come along and take it back and push Artie off the roof. Who? Where did he do the break-in? The Miller Trust. The Miller Trust. You either pick them right, George, or trim them right. He's very fit, and tough, and he's out of danger. A couple of days more, he'll be sitting up and taking notice. A couple of days, eh? In that case, I think you should change that nurse's roster, get an ugly one, <laughs> or see if it's still a male nurse. Thanks, Henry. Didn't give him any special care, just another human being. Another human being still alive, thanks to you. I'm obliged to you. Now, if you'll forgive me, I've seen the sick. Must think of the able body. See you. Goodbye. Jax! My God, look. What happened to you? I'm Knock all right. You're my cover. Oh, never mind your cover. Give me your gun. Why? Just give me your gun, Jax! And listen to me. Call Cowley. Oh. Tell him it's the Miller Trust. I'm on my way there. Okay. And I need backup. Okay. You're gonna shoot someone? You're gonna kill him? I don't carry a gun to kill people. No? No. I carry it to stop them killing me. Go on, son. Four spades. I accept that as a fighting bid. As we say in my profession, without prejudice. Excuse me. I'm bidding five hearts, by the way. Oh, no bid? Hello? Mr. Zadi. Yes? Who is this? It's me, Josh Culver. Josh, you know it's quite late? Yes, Mr. Zadi, but I've got to talk to you, sir. Well, couldn't it wait until tomorrow? I'll be in the office at 9 o'clock. No, Mr. Zadi, sir. It's now. It's happening now. What's happening now? They're evicting us. They're trying to throw us out again. Evicting? My God, they're defying a direct court order. I just know they're throwing us out. Listen to me, Culver. I know you're upset, but this is the best thing that could have happened for us all. They've gone too far. And this time, I'll settle them for good. I'm on my way, understand? Yes, Mr. Zadi. Thank you. God. I'm terribly sorry. And I really am. I think I had the winning hand. Darling, must you go? Yes, it's exactly the situation I've been hoping for. I have to go. You will excuse me. Well, Scrabble.
I let go. You get one gulp of air, and then you talk. Okay? Uh-uh. Cheating. Just one gulp of air. Who else is here? Who else? Pretty good. What are you doing here? Never know. Might need some help. Yeah, we'll stay there. Both ends against the middle, hey? You join Halton's mob, but you work for Miller. Now, Halton only plays at this clan thing, but Miller does it for real. And so do you, baby. And between the two of you, you make sure the blame goes on Halton. Now, you would. Correct me if I was wrong, wouldn't you? I'm just tired. I do as I'm ordered. I do as I'm told. You do what's in your nature. Kill the Jews. Run the blacks out of town. Kick the weak. Well, you kicked the wrong one when you kicked me. Because I'm going to take you apart. I'll get this dog. Yeah, he's coming. Lenny just saw his car. Zadi is on his way here. You won't be bothered by him anymore. Zadi's on his way. On his way where? What is it? A trap? A setup? Where? Tell me, did you ever see a man gut shot? No. Then I think you better wait outside. Go on. No. Where? The Culver's place. Rossmeyer Road. Tell me. Yeah? Got any cord? Yeah, what you was tied up with. Great. Tie him up with it. Tie him to the chair. Move it! Put your hands down. Put him to the slats. Come on, move it! Oh. Tommy, you got any more cord? I know what's holding up oh. me jeans. That'll do. But they'll drop off without this. Well, it's all in a good cause. Come on, son, I haven't got all night. Come on. Now listen, when my boss arrives, as Cowley, you tell him where I've gone, and you tell him that you're my assistant, acting oh. honorary, and therefore unpaid, all right? You'll never believe oh. me. All right, I'll give it to you in writing. Here, hold that, make it tight. Your credentials, OK? Thanks. Look, tie his legs up as he'll kick you. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. This Mr Cowley, is he white or black? I forgot to ask. I'm Mr. Doyle's assistant. Temporary, honorary, and therefore unpaid. Here are my credentials. He told me to tell you that he's gone to Rossmeyer Road. They've laid a trap for Mr. Zardy. Rossmeyer Road, APB all units. Get over there yourself, right. Jax. Doyle needs all the help he can get. You better go home, Sonny. Not in your goddamn life. Hey. It's Mr. Payoff. Archie was a friend of mine, and so is Ray Doyle. Oh, sit over there quietly. 
Doyle's angry at you. That's bad. That's the worst thing that could happen to a man. In a moment, I'm going to dial Mr. Miller's number. And then you're going to talk to him. You're going to get him here. You're going to bring him here to me. Why should he do that, eh? Mr. Miller's a top man. He won't come running just for me. You've never met Miller, have you? He's just a voice on the end of the phone. I think it's time you did meet him. Mr. Doyle, I was wrong. I've lost faith in this country. White trash. Yeah. You don't even know why you are doing this, do you? Slum tenements falling apart at the seams, but nevertheless home for some people. And Zadi has stood between you and eviction many times. But if you could get them out, every one of them, the land is worth nearly a million. Many men have killed for a lot less, a whole lot less. You didn't know what you were doing or who you were doing it for. That's the supreme irony. A died in the wool black hater like you has never met Mr. Miller. Good evening, Mr. Miller. Do come in. We have so much to talk about. I'd like to thank you. You have. By being up and around again. No, you know what I'm trying to say. Doctor. You know, when I was thrashing around back there, did I say anything? Nothing I haven't heard before. Yeah, well, you won't be hearing it again from me. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. You need it. Well, we busted Miller yeah. and the guys who stuck you. And Holton, too. He and his clansmen have taken their last ride here. Yeah. Status quo, eh? Yeah, all systems go back to normal. <laughs> well, it will be as soon as you can stand up straight. <laughs> that kid, Tommy. Yeah. There's a football match this afternoon, I promise. We'll take him on. Yeah, great. Actually, I've got this other engagement. Listen, enjoy the football. Right. Give my love to Tommy, will you? Mean it. Jacks. Yeah. First thing is a drink. Yeah, and then we plan our campaign. Campaign? Yeah. How to get rid of some of these damn whites. Yeah. 